Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So I've looked forward to this video for months and months and months and you know, the cat's already out of the bag, I guess. You guys see the title of the video. I have purchased a 1971 Plymouth Barracuda. Now this car ranks right up there among the top for me as far as dream builds go. You know, I think about the only thing for me that would beat it would be like a, you know, a Daytona or a Superbird, but this car really does it for me, okay? And I mean, in my opinion, nothing screams muscle car like a 71 Cuda with that awesome grill in the front. And yeah, I can't wait to, to drive the hell out of this car once we get it done. But before we do that, and you guys are gonna see just how bad this car is. Now it's not as bad as our Charger was, thank God. Um, but it's gonna need some substantial metal work and a lot of work along the way to bring it back to life. It's been sitting for a very, very long time. And uh, just kind of roughly, you know, how I came about the car. You know, with doing these videos and uh, putting out a lot of YouTube content, been able to make some great friends and uh, some contacts along the way. And a gentleman that goes by the name of Joe King, on the, all the Facebook groups, uh, he's over most of the Charger pages, had reached out knowing that I was a big fan of Cudas, and he let me know that he was putting a deal together to buy a bunch of cars, but especially two 71 Barracudas. Now, I wish I could afford to have both of the cars, especially with the story that goes with them both, but uh, the story goes, and I'm probably gonna get this wrong, but original owner still had the car, turned it into a parts car back in the 80s or so, and the car's really sat since, and uh, yeah, him and his brother went to the dealership the same day and actually bought sequential VIN number 1971 Barracudas, which is super, super cool. And I hate to break them up, but yeah, I couldn't afford both of them, guys. But uh, as I have with the Charger, um, you know, I'm gonna document and show you guys how we disassemble the cars, how I do every single step of the metal work, and this car is gonna need a lot of metal work. Um, I'm gonna show you the body work, the paint work, final disassembly, and most importantly, we're gonna do some nice big smoky burnouts at the end. But here over the next year or two, I'm gonna document every step along the way and share it with you guys. So that said, if you have not done so yet, hit that subscribe button, hit that hit that like button, really helps me out a lot with the, with the channel. And uh, you guys are not gonna to wanna to miss a step of this rebuild. So without further ado, let me go ahead and grab my GoPro and do a nice video tour of our 1971 Plymouth Barracuda. All right, so while a lot of you guys are probably looking at that thinking, oh my God, it's a lost cause, I personally see a diamond in the rough, but that's just me. Um, my wife definitely falls into the first category. She doesn't see the same things that I do. Now, this is the shocking part, okay? So as I mentioned, this car was a parts car. And over the course of time, somebody decided it'd be a great idea to go ahead, cut out the inner fender. Also, hey, let's take out the radiator support and let's can open the front frame rail here. And uh, yeah, a lot of work to do here. But as far as I know, 318 motor, suspecting or you know presuming it's the original engine. But as you guys can see, I mean, it's complete as complete could be all the way around here. Um, what's gonna be really nice about this is, man, it's gonna be very easy to take the engine out of this thing. Because <laughs> there's really nothing in the way. Now, fender tag is still here. I have not really gone into depth to see you know kind of what all the options were originally to me this is probably just a plain jane you know original uh, 318 automatic um, 71 barracuda so you know nothing necessarily special from the factory to me 
this car is extremely special because I'm going to turn it into a lot more than what it is today. Now, you know, especially with the with the Charger guys, I mean, I look at this and even the GTO and the other builds that I've gotten, and I know you're probably going to laugh when I say this, but this is the most solid car I bought in years. And that's what I see when I look at this. <laughs> so, you know, just looking at the metal work here, we're going to have to do some cowl repairs. Uh, also looks like some firewall repairs on this side here. And what I may actually do is front clip this thing just like I did with the Charger. So on that car, I actually cut the whole front half of the car off, welded a 68 GTX front clip onto that. Um, you know, or any other B-body front clip would have worked as well. Um, with this being an E-body, anything, uh, you know, 70 to 74 Challenger uh, or Barracuda will work on this. So if you guys have one, and I've been waiting to, you know, I didn't want to spoil it. People would have saw my name and, that, you know, see me posting, uh, requesting a front clip. But if you guys have one, you're on the West Coast, definitely let me know. And, uh, yeah, I'll put it to good use, I promise. But let's continue to walk around the car here. As you guys can see on this side... You know we've got some rocker issues to deal with here um passenger door opens up from the outside oh music to my ears now i have not looked to see if the build sheet is here too you know there has been uh you know another family of mice in this uh, car uh possibly some rats judging by the size of the turds that i'm finding here on the floor but there's been a lot of animals living in this thing over the years so who knows if the build sheet has survived. So these cars, a few different places on top of the, uh, the glove box here, sometimes within the seat backs, on the back of the seat here in the back seat, um, you might find one of those. So maybe I'll get lucky enough to find one, even though I don't plan on keeping this thing anything close to original, still cool. And uh, you know, I'd love to have it. But as you guys can see, it's pretty, uh, pretty complete interior here. Uh, complete front seats, complete dash. Door panels are still in it, but my goodness, green on green on green on green. I don't know what it is with me with green cars, but for some reason I have a magnet to them. The Charger was the exact same <laughs> trim as well. But back seats are still here. Door panels are still here. Drive shaft has been installed in the back. Um, yeah, but all the headliner bows here still in there. Yeah. So this car, you know, has been sitting for a very, very long time. I don't know how much of this is gonna be savable. Of course, I'll save the seats. We'll be redoing these seats. But uh, yeah, the dash looking pretty, pretty grody there too. I wonder what's underneath of this, uh, this dash pad cover here. But I can tell you one thing, I am not a fan of green interior. So this will not be staying <laughs> the way that it is now. Uh, but looking at our door sills here, I mean, it's pretty, pretty decent guys. Um, don't see any major, major rust holes, rust issues. Granted, the, the trim panels here are still on and our cover's still here. But, you know, we could see daylight all the way through the top of this here with our charger. Now, in my mind, I'm racking up all of the sheet metal that, you know, it's going to take uh, to bring this car back to life. And the list is, uh, is pretty big. But um, in a minute here, when I get done doing the whole tour, I'm going to go throw it on a lift in the garage and show you guys the bottom side. And I swear to God... I have not done anything but open the doors in this thing and look at it. So this is my first time seeing a lot of this stuff too. <clears throat> but looking around the car, all the trim's in really nice shape actually. All the glass is also in nice shape. Now, um, I was told this is date matched glass here, which I guess is pretty neat to find. Pretty expensive too to replace if you ever have to. Now to skip over here to the back, this car has one hell of a lean to it. I don't know if you guys can pick that up or not. And it was actually a lot worse before I installed my custom planks of wood here on the bottom side of this because it was really hard leaning to one side. Obviously, we're going to address that and replace everything here on the bottom side of the car. But I was able to score a whole bunch of parts of this car too. I've got a few different sets of taillights as well for this. Um, but again, a lot of the stuff on the bottom side here is going to have to be replaced. One major plus is that I have a sweet deck lid here to use we'll definitely put that to good use but it's a flintstone car here on the inside guys just like our charger was just like a lot of your cars might be as well um, and as i'm looking through this i see how many differences <laughs> there are between this car and the charger too which there's uh there's quite a bit so but as you can see we got some frame rails to attend to back here we've also got a full trunk pan to do looks like wheelhouses as well so I swear I'm a glutton for punishment with these cars. 
I enjoy doing it, of course, but <laughs> these are basket cases that I'm rebuilding here. Uh, looking here at the driver's side, you know, same thing. The quarters are pretty, pretty well roached in here. Ooh, got some foam jammed up in there. But we'll be doing wheelhouses. We'll probably end up doing mini tubs, just like we did on our charger as well, and uh, replacing a lot of this, uh, a lot of the sheet metal back here. Here on the driver's side, same thing on the outer rocker. You know, on both sides, it's really just the uh, kind of the back halves here. So we'll have to see what kind of shape the inner rockers are in if we have to do full replacement on that. Driver's door here don't open. So, well. Well, I might not be able to get, get in here, guys. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, the front fender is actually blocking me here from even being able to open this door, so I'm not gonna be able to show you, but same thing on this side, guys. Are missing a piece up here. I'm not sure exactly what goes up inside of that. Oh, actually, it just looks like it's another gauge. But gives you guys a pretty good idea of what we're working with here. In my mind, all I can hear is my bank accounts draining and uh, the sounds of grinders and, and welding are definitely gonna haunt my dreams on this one. But let me get this pushed into the garage, let's get it up on the lift and see what it looks like from the bottom side. All right guys, so we got her up onto the lift here, and as you saw, man, there's already parts of the car and, and blocks of wood falling off the car. <laughs> Just putting it up onto the lift, so. Um, but again, this is the very first time I'm seeing this car for the first time you guys are seeing it as well. So we're gonna learn about more about this car together here. Um, again, I think I am gonna just go ahead and do the front clip like I did on my uh, charger. Um, there's, there's definitely some damage here on the front side of this side. And then again, that one, I, I mean, there was no, uh, delicacy or care taken uh, with removing any part of this. Looks like they just use a Sawzall um, or a hammer or a chisel or the jaws of life. Hell, I have no idea, but it looks pretty, pretty rough. Um, looking here on the inside. Well, that's drums not seized up. That's nice. You guys might see these wheels and look, say they look a little bit familiar. These did come off my charger. So had these out back and was able to put those on once I got it. Um, some issues here on the front fenders. Now, you know, this car, being again my 71 CUDA, uh, I plan on putting the guild front fenders on it. Really don't care too much that these uh, these are an issue. But looking at this side, and again those outer rockers there, you know definitely eating through here. The inside does not look terrible. Now again we'll find out a whole lot more once we get to cutting on this old girl. But already it does look a little bit better. Now I apologize if you guys can't see everything that I'm seeing underneath this guy. Um, but actually the inner rockers look really good all the way around here, huh? Okay, well, torsion support's gone. We'll do that when we do the front clip at the same time. Definitely missing uh, some sizable chunks out of that side. Ooh, this side's even worse where that frame rail meets the, uh, the torsion support there. Um, inner rockers on this side. Dang, they're not terrible. They're not too bad at all. So, okay. Well, getting to the back side here, our rear frame rails, I mean, they're roached. Yeah, you can see it from the, from the trunk pan side, but you can see they're, they're totally split open here. So we'll likely do a double frame rail replacement. I'm seeing some things I don't like on the back side of that there. And dang, actually that rail doesn't look terrible. It does not look that bad at all. Now, one thing I did find, um, you know, as you guys know, I, I work really closely with AMD on a lot of the sheet metal here. Um, but I have seen one piece 
rear frame rails and full trunk pan welded together in the same one piece. So I have to look really closely at that, compare costs on both. Again, I'm definitely not made of money here, okay? I'm gonna be doing this, uh, don't laugh, on a budget, or at least as much as I can. I do all the work myself for that exact reason. Um, but uh, we'll have to compare that really closely together when we see. But here's the wood I was telling you guys about. I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely preventing the car from, uh, from totally leaning bad on me. But I assume because there's no rear shocks in this, that's the reason why there. I don't see anything major twisted or anything broken really here that would cause it to do that. You know, in some cases you might even see the, the frame rail punch through the trunk pan like I had on my charger, which causes that lean. But it actually looks like those are pretty well intact there and holding it to shape. So either something to do with our springs here or not having uh, shocks in the back. Another thing that I just noticed here is how dinky that rear end looks. Oh boy. You guys can see the size of my hand. I don't have gigantic uh, man hands here, but yeah, that's gotta go. <laughs> so, well, that one spins. Surprisingly, the drums aren't locked on this thing. Oh, there's that uh, outer rocker. Wow, again, guys, you can see the inner rocker there. It does look pretty solid. So I might be able to get away with a lot less work on that that I was thinking. Um, quarter panels, though, on both sides, as you guys saw, are definitely roached here. We'll have to do full rear quarters on it. And there's that damage. You can also see where the quarter panel split off that rear rocker as well. So, now I think this wheel right here is, oh yeah, yeah, that one's locked pretty good. So, but that's where our nice, fancy, uh, and very handy Harbor Freight uh, wheel dollies come into play here and uh, certainly makes it moving the car a whole lot easier. Alrighty, you guys, well, that about wraps up my initial walk around and just overall status of our 71 Cuda build here. As you can see, a lot of work. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of work tied up in this car, a hell of a lot of money too, but uh, you know, just the parts and uh, for uh, the price of parts alone is very small in comparison to what these cars sell for. I challenge you to go on eBay right now and type in 71 Cuda and see the price of these cars. It will blow your mind. So I'm sure the receipts from this build are gonna blow my wife's mind. So if you could, please don't tell her. Uh, but our friends at AMD actually make damn near every single part and piece for this car. Even more support are for this car than there are for the 68 to 70 Charger. Um, so really, uh, they've just released a lot of this back window structure, also the roof structure for these cars. So if you have one that's in the shape of my car, or if yours is even worse, which there's a lot more worse ones out there, um, just know that your friends at AMD definitely provide a lot of those parts and pieces for you. And uh, you can bring these cars from pretty much, you know, from zero to hero, okay? So to hit the highlights, again, on the sheet metal side of things, we're gonna start by doing uh, the front clip, the front frame rails, the radiator support, inner fenders. If you guys have a charger, or excuse me, a Cuda, or a Challenger that's been cut in half uh, that still has that front clip on it, you're on the West Coast, please let me know. I'd love to pick it up from you guys. That'll save me a whole lot of work in the end. Um, but we've got the front clip to do. We've got the rear frame rails, trunk pan, floor pan, firewall, upper cowl, <sighs> outer rockers, probably do this door skin with this big ass uh, crease, uh, sharp crease that's in there. Um, yeah, and I think that about wraps up the, uh, <laughs> at least what I know right now that I need for the metal side, which isn't that terrible. It's a lot of money, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of work to get that stuff done. But again, when you're comparing it to a car like this, that the only original parts left on it are the roof and the firewall, yeah, this is a whole lot better than that. <laughs> so, but I'm excited about this car. Again, guys, this is a bucket list car for me. It's a bucket list car for a lot of people out there. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to show you guys every step of the build, every step of the metalwork, the body, the paint, you name it, I'm gonna show you guys all how to do it. So with that, if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button as well. Definitely helps out these videos a lot, it extends our reach, gets the word out there, and it brings more people to the channel. So. Really appreciate all the love, all the support. Haters, love you guys too. So can't wait to hear you guys' feedback and excitement over this one. So with that, take care guys. I'll see you again real soon.